Hey, thanks for joining in to Talk Back. We haven't had this in a couple of weeks, so we're excited to be back together. Uh, you have Reverend Christy Dillon, our pastoral care catalyst here with us, and we're going to talk today about trust. So thank you for submitting your questions. We always invite you uh, during the message on Sundays, if you're watching, to submit some questions in the chat room, and then we, we talk about them. Josh is with us today. Josh. Good morning. So your first question is, uh, what are some ways that we can get through a season of doubt and come out stronger? Hmm. I had a feeling these questions were going to be really hard. To <laughs> Don't fight over who answers first. I know, right? Because uh, and we're all in that place. It's hard. I think one of the things is to acknowledge that you are in that season. So... You know, the question was, how do you get through the season of doubt? Um, so during the sermon, I was talking about, you know, that when Wes first encountered COVID, it was like, okay, we've got this, blah, blah, blah. But then the more time went on and, you know, I'm, the reality of, okay, it didn't go away in the summer, you know, that didn't thwart it at all. It's still just as prevalent as it was. Um, reality is we're not going to go back to life as normal. Um, and some people can't, you know, like even if we had church on Sunday morning in the high school, there are so many of West people that because of compromised immunity or their age, they just aren't going to be able to come. And so, you know, we were wrestling with, okay, how do we make this, better or relevant or try to continue to reach the people and we're a missional church and the only mission we were doing for a while is the food truck like how do we stay missional how do we how do we be who we're called to be in this uncertain time and you know I didn't want to admit to the staff I don't really know what I'm doing right now but carrying that around you know was just really starting to weigh on me and uh, I was talking with Amy Coles about it and she's a mentor of mine and the assistant to our bishop or I call her vice bishop and you know just speaking the truth and saying I feel really overwhelmed and anxious right now about the season of the church and then admitting that to the staff and owning that we're in it together and asking people to pray you know that those things changed things for me so I think just an admission of where we are because we we don't like to admit to our stuff uh, because then it makes it real but it is real and running from it doesn't make it any less real running from our problems does not make them go away it makes us feel weak mm -hmm. you know and we're not because everybody else is feeling the same way yeah so I think having having people with you which <laughs> we can't get together now so you know that community that we desperately need it's hard to do that, but like at school, like all of us that teach virtually, um, we were supposed to have a meeting Wednesday and we didn't have it. And one of the other teachers was saying, I was really disappointed that we didn't have that meeting. And um, it's because she just wanted to share what she was going through because we're all going through it. Mm -hmm. You know, like how hard it is to do this virtually or how hard it is to do that virtually. And it makes you feel better to know that people or other people are going through the same thing. Yeah, you're not in it alone. No. Everybody so. needs to start owning it together, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, our next question is, how do you differentiate between the God nudges and people's agendas? That is a tough one. That is a tough one. Again, don't you find out answers first. <laughs> <laughs> pray for discernment. I do. I do pray for discernment a lot, but... I think it depends on how well you know the people that are talking to you. You should mm -hmm. kind of have a feeling of what kind of person they are. Like, yeah. And I think. And what's your, you're what's aware. your history with that person? Right. Hopefully you're aware if they do have an agenda to begin with, you know, so hopefully you would know if you should trust what that person says, you know, like I've always thought surround yourself with people that, that you trust, that you, that maybe know the worst things you think about yourself and still love you, mm -hmm. you know, like that kind of person, that kind of person I would trust before 
somebody I didn't know as well or I don't know. Well, um, there were a couple of situations this week, actually, that, or this week and then over the last three to four weeks about the future of West and direction. And so uh, in one situation, um, we were getting some feedback about online worship. And I, the feedback was like 50-50. And so I decided that I was going to you know, asked some of the people that I'd very specifically asked to pray about our direction. So I called them and I said, you know, I didn't tell them, but I'm like, you're the tiebreaker. <laughs> you're the tiebreaker vote. I need to know how you feel about this right now. And so their conversation, um, you know, affirmed what I thought. And so, you know, not that I thought the opposite opinion was an agenda, but, I mean, they were driven by very personal needs instead of a, a bigger perspective or a bigger perspective of needs. So that's one example. And then the other example is just frequency of thought. So, like, when I'm trying to make a really big decision, I don't do it overnight. And so, uh, like, honestly, for the last three weeks, I probably have gotten the same nudge five different times from five different people in very different contexts. That's how you know. And that's, that's like, when I finally got the fifth one on Friday, I'm like, okay, God, you do not need to hit me over the head with this. Um, so uh, I'm like, okay, I hear you. So then I started, like, I'm going to have some future conversations with people to see if, as I give voice to what I think is God's voice, um, if there's validation from that. And that's how we launched the church, you know. I mean, we felt like it was a God thing, but uh, it wasn't until we started you know, talking about it and seeing that other people came on board or whatever that we, we did believe it was the God thing. And sometimes you have to trust your intuition mm -hmm. for the right thing or the wrong thing. Oh, gosh, like if yeah. there's something about the way someone says something or, or what they say that you, that you're kind of like, Oh, that doesn't pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. You know, always follow your gut. Like the first hire we ever made was the wrong hire, uh, of a worship leader. And we had to let them go after the 90 day you know, trial, contract, or period, or whatever, and um, it was just, it was excruciating to have to let them go, but in the interview, like, they said a couple of things that were red flags for me, that this was about them, and not about the job, and not about the opportunity to lead the church, and it was more about their musical success, and in the interview, I, I thought, this is not the right person, and, but then in subsequent interviews, you know, I'd ask questions geared around that and they'd craft their answer differently. And then as soon as we hired them, it was just a nightmare. And someone, I said, I thought this from the beginning. And they said, why didn't you follow your gut? Yeah. And I'm like, because I thought, you know, my gut was wrong. And since then, we have done better at following our guts, you know, as leadership folks. And we end up better off yeah. Luca, what are some ways you can discipline yourself to tuning into God's voice I think um, prayer like trying to make that as consistent as you can mm -hmm. um, it's hard to find like once you find a time I think um, that kind of helps it become a habit but I, I feel like the more that you're thinking about like scripture or prayer or, or being in the presence of God, I feel like that, um, that will help. Mm -hmm. Um, being still enough to listen, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and being mindful of listening, asking and listening, you know, saying reveal to me, like I will say, God, I need you to reveal to me the right direction and then just pay attention to the nudges that come after that, uh, listening again to Christian music or spiritual music, um, meditating, you know, some of the things we've talked about. Yeah. Okay. That's all we've got. All right. Today. All right. Well, thank y'all for joining in. We love your questions. Have a great week.